Welcome to the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. Now, whether you're one of the hundreds of thousands of women experiencing hair loss for any number of reasons, or if you're curious and want to check out what alternative hair is all about, you are in the right place. Hi, I'm Deborah. I am a certified alternative hair specialist, educator, and the co-creator of a -a one-of-a-kind, shame-free, stigma-free alternative hair boutique called Very Best Little Hair House, and that's where the magic happens. That's where I help women and men like you find the alternative hair that brings their inner beauty out. We take over where genetics or Mother Nature drop the ball and help you find and wear the alternative hair that makes you feel vibrant. I've made it my business to discover all there is to know about good wigs and toppers, and I love to talk about them. It's not just hair. It's so much more than that. This is about feeling complete, and if alternative hair is the way for you to do that, I got you covered. Yeah, it sucks when you see your scalp shining through your hair, but you know what? There is joy in finding the right alternative hair, trust me. It can be overwhelming at first. I mean, where do you start? Wig? Topper? Oh my God, will somebody know? What if my wig falls off? First of all, take a deep breath, I got you covered. This podcast addresses all things alternative hair. It's not always as easy as just finding a wig and putting it on, so I'm going to give you a tell-it-like-it-is viewpoint from what I see firsthand. I've been through it all. Stress, hair loss, alopecia, chemo. So I started my own journey about 20 years ago, and at that time I had nobody to talk to or get advice from, so I am here for you. And I can tell you this, even on my best natural hair day, I never looked or felt as confident as I do in my alternative hair. And now after five years of helping people in my shop get over that fear and get out there, I am bringing this to you to inspire, empower, and educate you. It's simple. When you look good, you feel even better. And if alternative hair is part of that confidence, who cares if you grew it or if you bought it? Forget your grandma's wig and prepare to look red carpet gorgeous. Time to end this shame and stigma. Life is too short not to love who you are, and I want you to get excited about the possibilities. So grab your headphones, feel the love I am sending your way, and let's do this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 20 of the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. This is Deborah here, and I am so glad you could join me. And thank you to everybody that's listening. A special hello to Ghana. Yay, thank you. I guess I'm doing well over there. And I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, because this podcast does come from my heart. My goal is to get you wherever you are okay with alternative hair. You do not need a reason to want to look better. It is not extra. Hair is not a luxury. This is important stuff. And whatever I can do to help you get there, I'm all about it. So let's get started. So one of the things I hear quite a bit in my shop, and I also see in like online forums is, I got this wig and it looked nothing like the picture. And if that has happened to you, you are not alone. I'm telling you, I order wigs by the dozen, and I have for five years now, and I still get surprised. So if you can make it to my shop or book an online session with me, just even by looking at you, I can give you suggestions that you're going to look fabulous in, and more women look better in many, many things they didn't expect. Also, I know brands, I know how they fit. So if you even just do an online session with me, I can give you my recommendations. But it's even better in person. And I'll tell you why. Because how the wig fits on your head is huge. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about fit. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit of what I look for or look at when I'm looking at a picture of a wig. Now, of course, when you look at the picture, they're pretty impressive, and that is because they're trying to sell you the wig. It doesn't mean that it's intended to mislead you any more than, you know, we tend to use our best pictures on Facebook. It's kind of like that. 
Now, when you're looking at the picture, the wig is probably even styled by a stylist. Sometimes they use product, but I'll tell you, they don't come out of the box like that. So when you're looking at a picture, the overall picture is one thing, but look at like the silhouette or the overall shape of the hair. By looking at that, especially when you're looking at the top of the head, That's where you're going to be able to tell roughly if it's like got a lot of hair or if it's lower density. Some of the brands, as you wear them, you will get to know which ones have, I look at them as having more hair versus less hair. That is also referred to as density. And that means the thickness. And you can also check if you go that far, the overall weight of the wig. Now, I always say if you're checking specs and things down to that level, you got to ask yourself, are you overcomplicating it? Because really, by looking at the overall picture, I look at the silhouette or the density, the average length, and really important is what side does it part on or do you have some versatility with where the part goes? And if the wig has a mono construction, M-O-N-O, you'll see terms like dumbbell mono. But when you see the word mono, M-O-N-O, you know that it's got a feature to make it look like a very realistic or down to the scalp part. Now, some monos are better than others, but again, that's a whole nother subject of a podcast. So if you're choosing a wig that is mono, full mono. That means you will be able to part it anywhere across the top. Now, if you see the abbreviation PM or the word mono part, that means that there will be an area to part it that's going to look like it's scalp. However, if it's just partial, you are restricted to usually that one inch area where you can part the wig Some of the tricks I get once I put my part in where I'm going to wear it when it's not on my head, use a little water in a very fine mist, and then I massage those little knots to get the part to lay as flat as I like it because I like a really realistic look. Now, that may be more work than you're willing to do, but I just thought I'd throw that tip out there. And anytime you get a full mono across your head or even higher than that is hand tied, you're going to have the most parting versatility. It's going to lay a lot flatter and generally will be a lot less dense as a general rule. Another thing you want to keep in mind of when you are choosing from a picture or a video, what have you, is length. Now, that seems like basic knowledge as far as when you look at the wig on the model or they will give you inches of how long it is. But what I ask you to take into consideration is your lifestyle. And sometimes because longer wigs can tangle a little bit more frequently, you can take care of that as you go along. But it's something to keep in mind. Your longer wigs sometimes are a little more care. So when someone is starting for a first wig, I say one of my hints is take a look at a length that is almost shoulder length or just braces the shoulders. The reason is, is that that length is going to last you quite a bit longer because of just the fact that there's not so much wear and tear. The enemy of any wig, whether it's human hair or synthetic, is friction. So the longer the wig is, the more areas where it has to connect with clothing, collars, what purse straps, that's going to show your wear first. I talked about some ways to kind of slow that down with frequent combing. And if you wear a longer wig, I clip mine up frequently. That'll help make your wig last longer. But again, that's another subject. Another thing that will change from wig to wig, of course, is the colors that it comes in. So, you know, if you're looking for something in a particular color, that is something to check. Some of the websites will have a feature where you can search for your color alone. I always suggest when you're choosing your wig to get, well, first of all, fit. 
but the overall look of the wig, the style that works for you. And then once you have a good wig for you, then branch out into changing your colors. Even for me, I'm like seasoned at changing wig colors or what have you. But when you are choosing a color that's going to be out of your comfort zone, sometimes it's helpful or a little bit more or less of a transition if you choose a style that you're familiar with. For example, for me, I love peppermint from Beltress. So I have her in several different colors because that style works for me. Now, that wig is a good example of you can get the regular version, which is mono part, and you can also get the hand tied version of the same wig where you can part it on either side. And a lot of my clients are very particular about having their part on a certain side, and it never fails when you find a wig you like and it parts on the other side, hopefully they've got a mono or a hand-tied version, and that will help you out on that. One of the things you're not going to be able to tell for sure until you get it in your hands is the texture of the fiber, aka hair itself. Every company is very, like, proprietary of their fiber. The fiber are like what they are known for. Some fibers are a little more texturized. Some are very, very smooth. And I find that certain colors will look better in the certain textures or whatever. And something like that, that's where an expert like me can help you pick your wig out. Because not only do I know what styles are available and what colors, also an expert with fit. So you might want to keep in mind, if you ever want to just book an online clarity session with me, send me a message. And for a half hour, I will brainstorm with you on what may and may not work for you. A lot of people are afraid to tell me like what they've tried and failed before, because if you're like myself, I had had epic fails before I said, okay, well, I guess it's okay to ask for help on this subject. I mean, and it's seriously okay. You would think that picking a wig or a topper is simple, right? And people do not realize, even people with hair, when they go to buy a wig, they think you see the picture and that's good enough. And there's so much more of making that alternative hair really part of yourself. It's something that is best done in person. And like I said, most important of all, it's like best done in person is fit. I mean, it's kind of like shoes. For example, there is size seven in all the brands. However, a size seven is going to fit you differently. It's the same with wigs, whether you fall into a petite category, average category, or large category. Your brands have relative consistency in how they're going to fit your head. So that is the best predictor other than getting an opinion from me because I know what brands fit, what's likely to fit, and that can be helpful. But basically, getting the wig to fit properly is something best done in person. And how do you know when your wig fits? Well, first of all, let me tell you this. It shouldn't feel like you have a wig on. The hairline should hit in an appropriate area. When you look up, the nape area should hit comfortably. And your ear tabs should fall right in front of your ears, just in the cheekbone area. And every wig will fit you differently. But overall, when you put it on, it should fit your head closely. It shouldn't be itchy. It shouldn't be hot. If you have something that you're digging at your head, I know because I've worn them. You can't wait to get home and take the wig off so that you can scratch your head all over. Let me tell you, there are better wigs out there and I know where to find them. Another thing that might help in addition to pictures is looking for a video of that particular wig. There's several terrific influencers out there. They all show wigs, give you a review on them. There's so many good resources out there as far as that goes. 
that can be very helpful. Just a little hint if you're impatient like me, sometimes the first time I'm watching somebody's video, I will kick it up to double playback speed so that some of them take longer than others. Some, it's like watching a 20-minute selfie. For me, my videos are short. I like you to see the wig from all angles. That should be enough information to go on. But hey, there's a flavor out there for everybody. So that's about it for this week. If you are on your alternative hair journey, yay, I'm so excited that you're here. If you're hesitating and you need a little push, let me know. You can find me in my wig group, Wise Wig Advice and Solutions on Facebook. Send me a message. Send me an email. Tell me where you're listening from. Seriously, it makes my day. I have a lot of clients that will send me their little bits of a wig diary or pictures or what have you. And I am highly confidential. It will go no further than me. I know I've had a couple reach out for online consults. So that is something that can be arranged. Don't be nervous. I know people are always worried. I get a lot of that, that people are hesitant to send me a picture or book something online. And listen, it's just me. I mean, your information is safe with me, what have you. I'm just excited that you're here. And if I can help you, please let me know. Until next time, bye-bye. If you loved this episode and want to connect with me, please go to my website and drop me an email, verybestlittlehairhouse.com, so we can get in touch. And until next time, remember that you are beautiful, perfect, and loved just the way you are.